Most people believe there's no such thing as absolute truth. Each person has their own opinion or their own version of the truth. Mm -hmm. And we often hear people saying things like, that's your truth, it's not my truth. Mm. What would you say in response to statements like this? Um, All of those statements are false, (laughs) actually, is what I would say. There is such a thing as absolute truth. Now, I find it quite remarkable that people try to assume that there's not, when if you look at the very creations, the very things upon which our lives in a modern environment are dependent upon, every single thing is dependent upon an absolute truth. So, for example, when I fly from here to the other side of Australia, I am putting my life in the hands of a number of discovered absolute truths. I'm putting my life in the discovery of an absolute truth regarding aerodynamics. I'm putting my life in the discovery of the laws of aerodynamics and that the people who are flying my plane understand those laws (laughs) and the people who designed my plane understand those laws. Because if they don't, the plane's going to fall out of the sky. Yes. And I'm putting my very trust in it. So, so I find it remarkable that almost everybody on the planet does accept that when it comes to physical laws, there is an absolute truth. So, for example, there is an absolute truth about the law of gravity. There is an absolute truth about the law of aerodynamics. There's an absolute truth about some of the laws of physics that they've discovered, the laws of acceleration, calculation of speed, all of these things. We have devices that are completely based around these laws. Mm -hmm. We have GPS units which flick a signal back to a satellite and back down to tell us exactly where we are. And those GPS units can be made because of the law, the law that man has discovered. So these are devices that are all based upon absolute truth. They're all based upon the absolute truth of physical based laws of the universe that God has created. God's truths, they're all based on God's truths. I find it interesting though that when it comes to emotional issues and soul based issues and feelings and experiences, everyone then throws out that fact. They throw out the fact that there is an absolute truth about everything. They then go, oh, but that's my personal experience. And what I'm suggesting to them is no, You have your personal experience, I agree, but that doesn't make it the truth. God's truth is that God can see your personal experience and knows the exact reason why your personal experience is actually occurring, given all of the laws of the universe right at this particular point or moment in time. That being the case, God knows the absolute truth of why and what is happening in your life right now. This then also makes to God your life completely predictable. (laughs) In other words, God knows every single law, laws that we have yet to discover, laws that we do not know, God knows, because God created them all. God knows every single thing that governs your particular life right now. Even the level of your own happiness is governed by a law, actually. And we don't believe that. The reason why we don't believe that is because we believe it with physical things, like, so, so when it comes to GPS units and computers and satellites and, and navigation and all these physical matters, we believe it then. And then for some reason, I don't, and I still don't really understand what it is because it's not what I do personally, but for some reason most of humanity throws out that fact when it comes to their emotional life, when it comes to their general happiness and well-being, when it comes to what is going on on the earth itself and the, and the pain and suffering that's existing on the earth itself. They don't believe that it's got anything to do with law, but it does. It's got everything to do with the fact that we don't know the absolute truth, yes. God's truth about those particular things, and we need to discover it as soon as we possibly can in order to reduce the pain and suffering that we're in. And if we use a practical example of that, going on what you spoke about earlier about the importance of divine truth in our lives, you said that it actually leads to less pain and suffering Mm. and to more happiness and more harmony. So if you and I have an interaction where there's a disagreement and I say, well, you attacked me and you say, well, you attacked me and that's your truth and that's my truth truth. and whatever. (laughs) Uh, 
um, what you're really saying is there is an absolute truth about what went on. Exactly. Neither of us might actually and neither understand might not, it. Not know it. Yes. But God does. But God does. <laughs> And then implicit in that, you're sort of saying that we can discover it. Yes, because there's laws involved in it. And if we do discover it, yep. there'll be more happiness. Of course. So wouldn't the reason why people don't want to uh, happen upon this truth is that, and want to hold on to this idea that I've got my truth and you've got your truth, isn't it just about fear and a lack of humility? not wanting to face certain things about ourselves well, or others? I, yeah, there, if we, of course I understand the emotional reasons why a person would choose such an action. There are all sorts of emotional reasons why. But, but literally millions of emotional reasons why, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because of their background and how they've been brought up and how their attitude is to life and whether they're in rebellion or whether they're in acceptance. or yeah. all, all sorts of different emotions yeah. would cause them to throw out these facts. But even with all those emotions it doesn't make sense to throw out this one fact. When it comes to physical things, we believe there's laws. We know there's laws that create an absolute truth. And our very lives, we make our very lives dependent upon them, in fact. So, so when I place myself in the hands of a pilot, I am making my very life dependent upon somebody's understanding of absolute truth, God's truth. Why is it then that I don't apply that to my emotional life, my soul-based life? And I feel the only reason why we don't is because we don't wish to see that all of these emotional things that we feel are also governed by laws, are also governed by facts, are also governed by facts that are not under our current understanding that we can discover. We don't want to do that. And yet we have completely the opposite attitude to the physical facts. And there is one primary reason why we have that different attitude. And that is, with the physical facts, we usually have little emotional investment, investment mm. in them. When it comes to the emotional facts and happiness and all these other factual parts, the soul-based parts of our life, we have huge emotional investments in holding on to our current positions. And that's what causes us to throw out the logic. We throw away the logical thought. If there's physical laws that govern my physical existence, then there must be laws that govern my love-based existence. There must be laws that govern my spiritual existence. There must be laws that govern my emotional existence. And all I need to do is do what I do with my physical existence and apply those particular things that I do to my physical existence to these other parts of my existence. In other words, I've got a large desire to find out all of the physical laws. Why don't I have a large desire to discover all the emotional laws? And why don't I have a large desire to discover all the spiritual laws? It makes no sense, logically. Because logically, when I discover the physical laws, my life gets better, it's more interesting, it's more fascinating. It becomes more economical. I can go all places around the world with less time. I can have a larger experience. I generally have more happiness, generally. I have more engagement a lot of the times. Not all the time, but it depends. But all of those things happen when I discover more physical laws. Logically, the same thing would apply if I discover my emotional laws. All those things would happen to an even greater extent. And if I discovered spiritual laws, all of the same things would happen to an even greater extent. Logically, that would make sense. And yet people throw away the concept that absolute truth exists emotionally and spiritually. They only believe absolute truth exists physically. And I find that remarkable. So what I'm suggesting is absolute truth does not only exist physically. It exists emotionally, spiritually. It exists in every facet of our life. God has made laws that we can discover that are absolute truths about the, our life and how we live our life. This is the most fascinating thing about our life. It's not just governed by these physical laws. It's governed by all these other laws that we don't know and have yet to discover. Most of people on earth have yet to discover. And yet, if we engage them, we will find, just like when we engage our physical laws, we, everything becomes happier and more experiential and, and, more, and, and, and we have a greater, more fulfilling existence generally, so too, when we discover the laws involved in our emotional and spiritual well-being, we'll have an even greater effect 
on our personal happiness and existence. So I feel that's the thing for people to understand is this, uh, I feel there's a large amount of illogical reasoning when it comes to law. We, we seem to reason logically when it comes to the physical laws, but when it comes to the spiritual, emotional laws, we throw them all out of the window. We say, oh, that's my truth. Mm -hmm. And that's not, not thinking that because each physical law has a God's truth element, has a universal, absolute truth element to it, that eventually every person on earth has to accept if we're going to engage that law, so too does every emotional and spiritual law have a God's truth to it, an absolute truth, an element that we all will need to come to see at some point that it is true. Mm -hmm. and, and eventually we will if we engage the process. Lovely, yeah. thank you.